This is Kate Kleiss. I'm the one in the blue scarf. And I'm Sarah in the polka dot coat. And this is where we grew up. And that's our old house on Moss Avenue in Peoria, Illinois. And that's where we began making books, right? Right. Though, remember, Sarah, you were my illustrator even before that. Oh, yeah. I do recall drawing a few book report covers for you in grade school. Yeah, I could never draw. Do you think any of our teachers ever knew that you did a lot of art projects for me in grade school? Or that I wrote a few short stories for you in high school? We should come back here sometime when school's open and fess up to our crimes. We can't get in trouble now, right? Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Let's go back to our old house, just in case. Okay, so here we are, back on Moss Avenue. Where we made our first book. It was a Christmas gift, remember? Of course. Our mom had a rule for us when we were growing up. We had to make the gifts we gave at Christmas and for birthdays. Which was easy for you, Sarah, because you're always good at art projects. But it was torture for me because I was hopeless at that stuff. So one year... It was about, hmm, 1973. I decided to write books to give as Christmas presents. And I asked you to draw the pictures. Which I did. We didn't have computers back then, so you used notebook paper and markers. Yeah, the story was about a little mouse who travels around the country stealing Cheetos and corn curls. I thought it was brilliant. Until we gave it away on Christmas morning to a certain older sister. Kate, do you remember where we found our book the day after Christmas? Yeah, in the garbage can. Our first rejection. But, you know, that's the day I think I became a writer. Because instead of getting my feelings hurt, I got busy and wrote another book the next day. And you drew the pictures. And then we made another book, and another book, and another. And 35 years later, we're still doing it. I love this street and the houses on it. We used to ride our bikes from our house over here to High Street. I like to look at the houses. I like to look in the windows and make up stories about the people who lived in these houses. Look at this one. Ah, it's fabulous. And completely creepy. When we were kids, we weren't allowed to watch shows like Dark Shadows because it gave us nightmares. So we had to make up our own scary stories. And they almost always took place in an old house. Is that how you started writing Dying to Meet You? Kind of, although you need more than a creepy setting. You need a conflict, a problem. That's where a story really begins. So in Dying to Meet You, I created a character named Ignatius B. Grumpley, who's a writer like me, but he has writer's block. So he decides to rent a house in a quiet town called Gasly, Illinois, which I made up. But I didn't make up the house he rents. I based it on this house right here because it's so beautiful and creepy. So Ignatius Grumpley rents this house to work on his book. Yes, but once he gets there, he finds someone's already living in the house. An 11-year-old boy named Seymour and a ghost named Olive C. Spence. Say it fast. Olive C. Spence. Olive C. Spence. I love suspense. Exactly. Olive C. Spence made a vow that she would haunt her house and the town of Gasly forever or until someone publishes one of her books. So, Dying to Meet You is the story of the relationship between the old writer, the young boy, and this 190-year-old ghost. Exactly, and what happens when the three spend a summer together. Everyone always wants to know if being sisters makes working together harder or easier. I think it's easier because I'm older, so you have to do whatever I say. Yeah, that's the problem. I'm kidding. The truth is... I have to do whatever you say. No, the truth is... Anything that has to do with the story and the words you decide. Right, and anything that has to do with the art you decide. And we do disagree from time to time, but not very often. It helps that we shared a bedroom for 18 years. I know, that's the key. If you share a bedroom for that long, you can do anything. Did you know I learned to read by um, reading your diary? You did not. Didn't I ever tell you that? Are you serious, Kate? You're lying, right? Never mind. You better be kidding. Never mind, never mind.